This is the final chapter of the Steel Hall modeling in this video. We will explore different types of nodes and supports to complete our structural analysis model. First, let's take a look at different node types. To find a list of all available node types, double click on a node in the categories area. You can then change the respective node type. In addition to the standard node on a member, there is an option to set nodes between two points or between two nodes. These functions are useful when you need to quickly insert a node at a specific location between two known points. The online node mainly refers to surfaces and allows you to insert nodes on lines, such as the edges of a plate. In the options area, you can add supports and finite element mesh refinements to the selected node by checking the corresponding checkboxes and defining the properties in the new tab. Now we are going to close the edit node dialog box and add supports to our steel hull. To do this, we're going to click on assign nodal support. In the new dialog box, you can enter the nodes manually in the node number area or click the symbol on the right of the structural model. Below you'll find a list of the most common nodal supports in the bitmap of the currently selected nodal support type. This is on the window to the right. You can use the symbol with the yellow star to create a new nodal support. The new nodal support dialog box is structured similarly to all dialog boxes for creating new elements. The list of available nodal supports is on the left, properties and additional options in the middle, and the help display or bitmap is on the right. In the support conditions, you can find quick access to various support types, as well as lists with nonlinearities. Note that nonlinear supports differ in color from linear supports. For our steel hull, we want to use hinge supports, which are already included in the list on the left, so we don't need to define any new nodal supports. So now we're going to select the hinge support. Now we want to close the dialog box by clicking OK. Now let's rotate the hull so that we can easily drag a selection window over all the column bases at the same time. You can adjust the display size of all nodal supports by right clicking on any nodal support and using the slider in the shortcut menu. Our 3D hull is now completely modeled. Next, I'll show you how to use visibilities to work more efficiently in RFM. In the Views Navigator, you can display and hide the desired elements in the structural analysis model. This makes it easier to work with large structural models. Expand Members by Section in the Visibilities area, and then you can display the desired sections while hiding all others. In the work window, you can right click to completely hide elements in the background. Visibilities allow you to select, edit, or delete the desired elements efficiently. You can display the entire model again by deactivating visibilities. Now you know how to model an entire beam structure in RFM6. Try going through the individual steps again for the best learning experience. In the next video, we will continue with load cases and design situations. Until next time.